Hello, one. Hello, all. I guess it's time to do a live, because I didn't do one last night, because I was playing Helldivers instead. This is the way. How is everybody? Hope you're well. <clears throat> Hail Kaon, indeed, Neil Hammersmith, indeed. Hail Kaon. Ahoy there, Tangerine Star 26. How's it going? <clears throat> so, Little King. What's up, big dog? Hey, Ryan, how's it going? Good to see you, man. We will have to get together sometime soon. For sure. But anyway, in the meantime, what y'all want to talk about? And Ryan, are you playing Helldivers too? If you're playing Helldivers too, let me know. <clears throat> In the trailer for the acolyte i have not no uh olivia first mod yes tangerine star 26 to be honest so so yeah same same you know hammersmith you're going to see ghostbusters frozen kingdom of course i am uh, me and sylvia will probably go um frozen empire yeah Yeah, I felt the same. About what? I didn't know the Accolade trailer was out, so... Was not aware of this. So I hope it's good, because, you know, I've been enjoying, actually, what Disney's been putting out with Star Wars, aside from The Last Jedi. Um, so. Finally seen Dune 2 tomorrow, however. Yeah, Silly and I still have to see that one as well. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay, I'm excited to see what they do with it, but it looks kind of corny and tonally very different from literally anything else Star Wars. Oh, no. <laughs> Coming from you, that's like, oh... Yeah, if I heard that from, like, some other YouTubers, I'd be like, yeah, it's fine. Just wouldn't ignore what you say because you're an idiot. But from you, I'm like, oof. Got all your opinion on that stuff, so. Oh, my God, is that a puggy snore? Hey, Precious. Hey, Lola. Hey, Dot. Yeah, they're all here. You gonna come up? You gonna come up, Precious? Come on. You want to get up there, do you? Well... I don't know if I should give you this. It's got a hole in it. You're just going to pull all the stuffing out of it. So no. You're going to take it anyway? Hold on a second. Guys. <sighs> got to find a home for some of these books. Come on. Megan, come up. Come on. Come here. Come in. Um. Hey, Eric. How's it going? Hope everybody's doing well. Robert April is here. Are we having fun yet? As Sakara Sue says, always. Always having fun. Okay, just wait a minute, guys. You can't have it right now because you're gonna rip all the stuffing out of it. Which means I gotta take out this plastic thing out of it. It's a sheep. But it's got its noisemaker thing in there and they like to rip them apart and like eat those. 
and I don't really want them doing that. But you're going to do it anyway, aren't you? No matter what I pull out of it, you're going to just pull more out. This is the way. All right, uh, watch. There we go. Uh, Little King, hey, by the way, when is London Comic Con this year, buddy? Uh, I'm not exactly sure the exact date, but same time of year as last every one of them. So you can probably look it up. Just Google it. London, Ontario. Come oh, seriously? Already? Oh my god. Uh, Jamie Somerville. Evening, Captain. Enjoyed the Admiral's tier list. Great fun. And first list where someone, something, kicked off the board. <laughs> yep. When Fleet Pod comes into this live, if he does, rub it in because. I can't believe he did what he did. Uh, Tangerine Star 26. The first trailer doesn't reveal very much. Instead, it gives an idea of the general theme and tone. We will have a better idea with the second trailer, which I hope will have more grit and shade. Mm, I haven't seen it yet, so I'll have to check it out. Eagle Rider, still as crazy as ever. I do try. I do try. Good to see you. Vicaro Sulu, I'm glad someone mentioned Admiral Hansen from Best of Both Worlds. He is exactly who I think of when someone says Starfleet Admiral. Uh, Tangerine Star 26, am I really the only one who's hit the like button? There's eight likes, so no, you're not the only one. Okay, again, seriously? Where is this coming from, like... How do you find more stuffing in here than what is actually in here? I, I don't understand. Like, the mathematics of it hurts my brain. There you go. <clears throat> May 24th to the 26th. What is that, Eric Martin? Uh, Jamie Somerville, indeed, Clancy is S tier, illogical, illogical. Tangerine Star 26, hit like. Uh, Captain Robert April, I mainly default to Admiral Comac beca only because we saw him uh, more often. What is May 24th to the 26th, Eric? Comic-Con this year is going to be September 14th to the 15th, Little King. So. All right. Might be ordering a new doll from your mother-in-law. Can you sneak it across the board? No. Rikara Sulu, Admiral Nakamura was in TNG three times, should have been on the list. Well, they should have said something, because we would have added them. How's the Camuro? What's a Camuro? I don't know what a Camuro is. Uh, Robert April, the date's for London Comic Con. No, it's this in September, so. 
Eric Martin says, I like the Admiral from Drumhead. He doesn't say a word. Eric Martin, London Comic Con. Uh, London Comic Con is not in May. So I don't know where the fuck you got that from, but that's the same weekend as my birthday celebration at Tilt Arcade, which is May 25th. So no. <laughs> London Comic Con is never in May. But thanks for playing. I did look it up. It's September, so... Eagle Rider, the question is, do I need to just hang out with you to get you back on stream? Because I will totally dump Robert as a stream buddy for a night. Um, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't always like a, a lot of people in a stream because they all over talk each other and it just gets to be a little too much. But, you know. I'll go, come on at some point, just whenever you ask me or throw up a link, I'm either going live or I'm about to go leave and do something else, like an appointment. Um, there's always something going on, or sometimes I just don't feel like it. So, but I would like to come back on at some point, yes. Little King literally just pulled up the site when you said that. Captain Robert April, hey. <laughs> I love you, Robert. I can't wait for the Great Wonder Fest in June. Indeed. Yeah, so my birthday celebration thing, uh, my birthday party, which all you guys are invited to, is May 25th, which is the Saturday. And then I leave for Wonder Fest on the Thursday, which is May 30th. My actual birthday is May 28th. So, but yeah, I leave on the 30th and then, uh, yeah, which is Thursday, so. Camaro, spelling, you're right, I know. Yeah, it's important, because otherwise people don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So, make sure you spell things correctly. Uh, yeah, the Camaro's fine. Uh, haven't had it out yet, um, driving around, but uh, it's it's good so far. It was running fine last time I ran it, which was in the fall, and it'll be, probably, it'll fire right up, hopefully. So, Olivia, love that your 50th is at an arcade. Really, in the old days of popping down to the old arcade to play the new Pac-Man. Eagle Rider, honestly, I asked that I, I asked that so I could troll you both at the same time. Oh. Two birds with one stone. Very clever. Very efficient. Uh... I will DM a few times. We can stream later. Sure, yeah. Olivia, my birthday will be driving 500 plus miles. Well, that doesn't sound like fun. Spelling, sir. Yes, sir. Yep. Karasulu, Captain wants White Castle on the way to Wonderfest. Uh, I don't know if the, I don't think there are any White Castles on the way to Wonderfest. There is one in Louisville by the Crown Plaza, though. Um, but yeah, I love White Castle. Captain Robert April, I've got to show you my new-ish Migo stuff. Ah, nice. Eric Martin, are you going to have creepy guys, uh, wandering around, wandering around selling quarters to complete the 80s experience? Oh, wandering around. Uh, no, that's not how that works. All the, all the games are free to play. Olivia Julius, did you get your VR font, wand fixed or do you have a to transplant a new one? Funny thing, I started making a video about, can I fix it? And uh, got it apart, went to put the new battery in and the new battery is the wrong battery. You need to pull out the old one. It's an L LSI 1441. And the one they sent me was an LSI 1442, which are technically the same, but one's the LR2, the one they sent is smaller, and it's also got way less milliamperage. So I needed to, I need to return that one, and I ordered a new one already, but it won't be here till Sunday. So it, it's, the, the wand is currently in two pieces down on my workbench for awaiting the, the arrival of the battery. Little King, when do you usually bring the uh, Camaro back out. Do you always wait till the same time or just go by the... Oh, I would just go by the weather. Let's go by the weather. Hikaru Sulu, would you like a Captain Robert April series with a TOS-style Constitution class? 
No, not necessarily. I wouldn't be opposed to it, but if it's like Strange New Worlds where they change the way everything looks, then no, I really could. Uh, no, no, thank you. Uh, Olivia Julius. Yeah, it sucks to have a broken wand. I don't even want to know. Eric Martin. Doesn't it suck when your wand isn't working? For VR, yeah. Yeah, they say the wand does, doesn't matter, but it does. A thousand percent, yes. Mark Lawrence just chaperoned another successful field trip, this time to Universal Studios. Oof. We're getting back late because of traffic, but the kids are safe. That's awesome. Good to hear, Mark. Robert April, it had better be uh, slavishly adherent to canon or there will be hell to pay. Yeah, just fucking keep it looking like it's supposed to look and don't mo update everything just because we can, the Fucking morons. Fleetpaw, the fuck did I walk into? Broken wands and batteries that don't fit. Um, kinky, I guess. Uh, no, VR controllers, but if you want to go there, fine. Well, hello there, OB. Hi, Trekkernaut. Little King, Ron Weasley over here with his broken wand. Olivia Julius, hey, Fleetpa, who is the best admiral? Yeah, Fleetpa. Shay says, if I ran Star Trek, I would do a show in Lost Era and strictly adhere to canon. Yes. Canon... Okay, canons is super important, and yet, yes, the, Star Trek has broken canon many times in small little ways, and that's fine. It's fine. You can't adhere to everything. But the visual style and the visual language of the show is very important, and that needs to be adhered to. It's that matter. It's 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 that simple. Uh, Admiral Sheer fucking hubris, Olivia. Eric Martin, I haven't had my VR hooked up and running in over a year. Oh my. Eagle Rider, he skipped my size comment. Damn it, being censored trolling tonight. No, I was just sick of all the wand jokes. That's all. As you can tell, I'm probably, as you can probably tell, I'm not in the very best of moods. So just, it's getting a little old, guys. Uh, Jamie. Clancy is still hanging off the board at F, yeah. Tangerine Star, uh, is there any word on Star Trek Stranger World the fourth season? Or after Star Trek Discovery ended, ending, could we all slowly wind down for a f fish start later? I don't know what the last part means, and no, I don't know when the release date is for Star Trek Stranger World season four. I don't know. Uh, Robert April, occasional slip-ups in canon are expected. Blatantly violating it is unforgivable. Yes, exactly. And Dan is here, Henchman37. Good evening. Good evening, sir. I didn't do a live last night because, you know what? We had to go kill bugs. Kill the Terminus. And, uh, so I had to do a live tonight, Dan. But good to see you. Shay says, Fleet Paw is trolling with Admiral Clancy. I don't think he is. I think he's quite serious, actually, considering how much he put to move her all the way up the board. Eagle Rider pouts, I only made one. Poor me. Yeah, but it was everybody else piling on. I just didn't want to keep perpetuating it. I apologize. Hi, precious. What do you want? Don't look at me like that with those pug eyes. So, who out there has a tattoo? Who out there has a Star Trek tattoo? If you do, you should check out my video tomorrow on this channel. It's talking about Star Trek tattoos. Just saying. Eagle Rider story. I a bit moody tonight as well, Hugs. Oh, sorry to hear that. 
hugs right back at you. Hope you feel better. Uh, does Disco have a release date in April? Or just say April. April 4th. We've known that for like a month and a half now. So April 4th is the day. Eric Martin. So when did that dish become the main nav deflector? Was that on the refit? Because in TOS, it didn't think... No, and it, it wasn't a it wasn't a navigational deflector in TOS. It was a sensor dish. For forward sensors. Uh, it only became the nav deflector because after the refit they were they retconned it. So Eagle Rider, no tattoos. I don't even have pierced ears, very natural. Hmm. Nice. Matthew Lebner, good evening, Captain. Great live today with the commander. Well, thank you. It was a, it was a fun one, actually. Uh, Fleet Pa, did you get a Star Trek tattoo, Stuart? Uh, no, I absolutely did not. But I the, the video is about Star Trek tattoos. And it ends with Sylvia's Star Trek tattoo. So... Shay, I saw the Matt Boardman talking about yesterday's Enterprise about a month ago. You saw Matt Boardman talking about yesterday's Enterprise? Where'd you see that? Little King, I feel like Trek has been around too long for there's no... For there no not have been a few continuity errors or small broken canon. But yeah, you gotta be always trying your best to keep it consistent. Exactly. Jamie Somerville, maybe Fleet Paw has a tattoo of Clancy, and that's why he likes her so much. Yep, right in his very sheer, because I'm sure he, like, shaves it. F fuck hole, I guess. Sheer fucking hubris. That's her, where her face is, and her mouth is. Yep, I can see it. I can see it now, and that's terrifying. I'm blind. It's, it's fine. <sighs> Captain Robert April. From what I'm hearing, the funding mechanism for leg legacy between Paramount and Amazon is always in, already in place, but just a matter of when circumstances are right. Well, let's do it before people don't, like, people fucking die or get too old. Like, sorry, Jerry Ryan, like, if you want her to be in it, she's getting kind of up there. And it's just, she's just like Patrick Stewart. She, he looked fine. He looked fine until he looked like a fucking skeleton. She's the same way. She still looks fine. There's going to be a day that that wall, she hits that wall and it's like, what is this that I'm looking at? So take advantage when you can. I.e. when Kurtzman is no longer in position to not sabotage it. Yeah. Eagle Rider. Easiest way to see cringe in continuity is to marathon... Ben just show and see all the errors. Hello, Cosmo. Trek or not, may your mood improve, Cap. You make us go. I try. The Schwartz flows through you. Feel the Schwartz. Shea Lookmore Productions, seventh rule. Matt Boardman was on with Sirik Lofton and Denise Crosby. Nice. Uh, Eric Martin, how can we cheer you up, Cap? Send me lots of super chats. That'll help. 100%. Other than that, just be you. Just be you guys, and I will cheer up or not. Shay says they will wait too long with Jerry Ryan like they did with George Takei. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Hold on. And you know what might cheer me up is my sand art. I'm just going to flip this thing. Maybe get a good... And uh, no, that's totally fucked. Yep, that's uh, not going to be a good one, but that's okay. It's now flipped for the next one, which will be a good one. Maybe, I don't know. Eagle Rider, sorry, I broke as fuck. I will just keep you, give you my lovely trolling. Yes, please do. That cheers me up too, sometimes. Uh, Fleet Paw, I have a reason for liking Clancy. A lot of people are like, oh my god, she's more Picard and emasculated him. A feminazi, ugh. But what's your reason for liking her? 
because what you said earlier in the live is not an acceptable answer. She was doing her job. He badmouthed Starfleet on the Federation News Network. Yeah, because they were wrong. And he's still Jean-Luc Picard. I'm just saying. That was a personal vendetta on her part. Something happened in their past. He He ducked out on a date or something. I don't know, but that's a fucking personal vendetta at that point. I wish they would have kept the ending in with uh, her saving the day instead of Riker, because that would have been perfect, and that would have made her that would have redeemed her character. But they fucked it. So Shay says Captain Cheery was was something. I mean, sand art. Okay, Eagle Rider agreed fully. Fuck that bitch. Technically abusive behavior. Uh, Captain Robert April. Frankly, George Takei do just doesn't have the right stuff to be a series lead. He's fine as a supporting actor, but not quite as the lead. That's why you build up the crew around him. Just because he's the captain doesn't mean he's the lead. <laughs> you know. They could do they could do more with that. They could have had a good first officer or something that uh, I don't know. But yeah, sorry, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'll just shut up. Cosmo, I need to make a confession. I lost interest in current Trek just because how it has been treated the last few years. All I ask is a tall ship, a crew, and a star to guide it. Uh, Fleet Paw. What I saw was an admiral who got dragged down by Picard on galaxy-wide news network along with the rest of Starfleet who then had Picard show up at her office and ask for a ship and crew. Yeah, for a very good reason, which she wouldn't listen to. Uh, I, I kind of see your point, but at the same time, you got to take into account the man's history and his what he's done for the Federation. Sure, that thing just happened, but uh, events since then kind of made him come to you, so... You might want to not be a cunt. I'm just saying. Or maybe you would be and to get hated by everybody that sees it. I don't know. Whatever you feel like. <laughs> Eric Martin, $5. Smile cap. Cash for the cause. Oh, thank you, Eric. Is this convincing? and have the audacity to say if I'm Admiral Rank and have the audacity to say if my Admiral Rank is an issue I'll take a dem uh, demotion to Captain I wouldn't say that's audacious that's, he's trying, he's pulling a Kirk he doesn't care about the rank that's quite fucking obvious um, yeah, I don't know we're not going to agree, Fleet Pa, but I don't know what to tell you. That's fine. Check or not. What if she was actually Wesley, a traveler in disguise and not actually the Admiral, and he's simply getting revenge for Shut Up Wesley? Yes, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Very much sense. Or she, she turns out she's, in fact, Wesley's godmother, and she heard about that. And, uh, you know, that doesn't fly with her. I would accept those answers more than just outright. Fleepa, okay. Fleepa, I like your train of thought. I like your reasoning, but it doesn't hold water. <sighs> there are ways to deal with other Starfleet personnel and to just outright dismiss them the way she did is unacceptable. I'm sorry. I don't care what he just did. You got to look at the career that's behind it and the reason that he's coming to you. Uh, if you think this, there's an issue, there might be an issue. So you might want to at least look into it so you don't look like an idiot. And that's exactly what's happened in the original ending of the show where she came at Warped in to save the day and save Picard. <laughs> or say, well, stop the Romulans anyway. Picard probably still would have died. Because they had filmed it, but then Jonathan Frakes wanted to showboat and be the one to save the day, which is fine too, I guess. But it takes all the the 
redemption out of Admiral Clancy. Because she did end up looking into it and realized that Picard was right and realized that she was wrong and therefore came in to help him out. So I would have been much better, but they fucked it up because of course they did. Cosmo, don't get me wrong. I still love the talk about Trek and love this channel. Thank you, Cosmo. Fleet Pa, who had a very public, very disagreeable departure from Starfleet, but she still followed up on what information Picard gave her. Yeah, because that's what you do. Because it's fucking Picard. You know? I don't know. Captain Robert April, I think the same actress had also played a no-name lieutenant on TNG, so payback either way. Yeah. Eric Martin, they just wanted to show a, a contentious a contentiousless utopian Starfleet, so they just made her difficult. Yes. Yeah, they, they, difficult is a word for sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think I might have even devil, played devil's advocate with her when that was on as well, Fleet Pub, but I just I don't, I don't agree anymore. Um, oh, Daniel's here. Hello, Daniel. Good to see you. I'm going to leave now because Daniel's here. Ah, well. So, any new news today? New news. No. Is there supposed to be new news? Or old news? Or just news in general? No. Eagle Rider. I hate to dip for a bit, but got an event coming up that I dye my hair for. Fine. No, it's fine. Enjoy. What color are you dyeing it? Let us know first. Hot pink? Sylvia had hot pink hair for a little bit. By the time the last episode was getting close to being aired, it was clear to the producers, at least, that that Admiral was now hated by the fans, so they panicked and swapped in Riker. I don't think that's 100% accurate. Um, they could have, they would have totally redeemed the character if she had come in. So, whatever. It's, it's, it's water under the bridge. It's stars under the warp field. I don't know. Boimler purple. Hmm. Sign it back to her natural red. Hugs, sorry to go. Really love you to you and the Admiral. Thank you, Eagle Rider. Go enjoy. I want to see your hair when it's done, though. Um, Fleet Paw. They did the same thing with Shaw, though. Shaw didn't tell Picard and Riker to fuck off like Clancy did. He treated them the same way. We actually got to see his redemption, though, and we loved him. Yeah. And that no moment was hilarious because he did it in a way that was like funny, not sheer fucking hubris. That was a bit much. She could have said no in a more polite manner and it would have been like, yeah, she's still a good admiral. She's doing her job. But the, the personal nature of that attack on Picard, unacceptable, unacceptable behavior from any, any professional. Sorry, I don't know that. I didn't fucking ask you, did I? Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. We need more Breen Confederacy in Star Trek. Yes, the Breen. It's crazy Breen, I tell you. Should dye the left side red and the right side green. Then we know your uh, spatial orientation at a distance. 
Eric Martin, I agree. When she found out that the Romulan agent had duped her, she would want payback. Robert April, season three of Picard was produced by people who knew what the fuck they were doing. Yes. Hikaru Sulu. No, I would like to see more of the Shaliak corporate. Track or not, we need more Tholian, so advanced and mysterious. We did a whole episode. It was one of our anniversary episodes on the Tholian, uh, the Tholians, Tholian assembly. Yeah. Um, let's go check that out on tra on track yards. Isn't there a backstory that Tholians came from another galaxy? Yes, it's in Starfleet battles. Fleetpa, so I missed the beginning. Why are you fe feeling poorly this evening? I, I didn't say. So you didn't miss anything. Uh, Hikara Sulu, or the First Federation. Yeah, the First Federation would have been interesting to see more from, for sure. Definitely uh, mysterious and strange. And such large ships. And such small people. Or at least one small person. Anyway. Eric Martin, weather was shit today and it affected my mood. Same here, obviously. And yeah, tomorrow's supposed to be three degrees colder. So, yay. It's a good time. It's very nice. Anyway. Our first anniversary special was the Tholians. Really? Tholian, one year anniversary. This was fucking out of forever ago. My God. My God, man. What kind of craziness are we going to see? Me and Sam from like eight years ago. Oh, yeah, that's old. That's one of our old intros. Let's see, cringeworthy. Hey everyone, glad you could all join us today as this is a pretty exciting day here at Trek Yards. Reading the script. As always and forevermore, I am your host, Captain Foley. And I'm your other host, Kamala Cockins, and today is Trek Yards' one year anniversary. One year today, our first episode was released. Episode one, the TOS Bird of Prey. So, in honor of that great and momentous event, we bring you a special episode. Now, if you will recall, our very first test episode or episode zero, or cage pilot, you could say, was not initially released as we used it as a test bed. 25 minutes long. This the talks only survivor being Kyle Riker, Commander Riker's father. Later in Star Trek Online, the Tholians are featured yet again with some very formidable looking ship designs, including the Tarantula class Dreadnought, the Recluse Battleship, or Weaver Cruiser, Mesh Weaver Frigate. Oh, let's see. Oh, there's the Starfleet Battles stuff. Who wants to learn about Starfleet Battles? What? Well, minerals are pretty standard throughout the galaxy, but it's probably just a translation thing. Mm. We just translated them into crystals that were similar to ours. I don't know. So are they it's the just... same color then? Is there a blue ship and a red ship and a green ship and a... No, they're all the, pretty much the same color, which is like a coppery color or a yellow color for Tholians in, in Starfleet Battles. So. That's just us again, then, isn't it? Just the, yeah, okay. yeah, it's just us being humans. Uh, <laughs> uh, the main exception to this rule, of course, being the Neo-Tholian ship called the TK-5, which was essentially a regular Shard-class vessel compared to the... Hold on. I missed a whole bunch there. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. We'll start there. Back Do you care? Retro, no. And our versions designed in Star Trek Enterprise, designed by Mr. John Eves. And the ships were extremely powerful, especially for, well, very, very small size. Uh, and even in Enterprise, a couple of Tholian ships were able to take out a very powerful Vulcan combat cruiser, the Talkia class, um, which was one of the most technologically advanced ships of its era. When the first Tholians initially arrived in our galaxy, they only brought with them one active shipyard, and as such, were only able to produce this one class of vessel early on. As we just mentioned, this was referred to as the Shard class. They eventually went on to produce larger and more diversified ships, but early on, they either welded or in some cases were able to magnetically link several of these smaller craft together to configure larger ship classes, such as those seen in Starfleet Battles. 
be cool if they could combine like Species A four seven two did, just like all sort of come together and fire an even bigger. Yeah. I don't know. But Starfleet Battles actually offered up even more thirteen ships over the years with many different classes and sizes. Most of these designs, however, consisted of the smaller thirteen ship being linked together with small variations of the standard shard class shape. Yeah, so just really different variations of the same design. And this is the fun part. So some of these ship classes were the Felspar class, it's an escort, the Quartz class, destroyer, Garnet class, a light cruiser, the Ruby class, heavy cruiser, sensing a pattern here, Amethyst class, battle cruiser, Sapphire class, destroyer, and the seldom seen Emerald class, which is a juggernaut. No diamond class though, guys. Um, and they also had a black widow carrier, which carried eight fighters, with each of those being magnetically mounted onto the exterior of the craft. Although I got asked, Stuart, so Emerald, Amethyst, Sapphire class, these are our words. How, why were they named? Because that's how naming convention works, Samuel. They don't have to have the same names of crystals in their culture for us to name their ships that. That's why. He always goes off script like that, and it annoys me sometimes. That's fucking funny. I gotta get a screenshot of that. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that is our one-year anniversary Tholian um, episode. Check it out if you are able to. The link is there, obviously. Uh, where the hell is Fleet? Paul, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna throw something in the Discord. Um, which you need to check out in the April Fool's thing. Uh, let's see. Because I just saw this as I opened up Google. That's one of the first things that came out or came up. So, Alexis and. <coughs> But yes, it did say that. No, you don't want to do that. Uh, so yeah, I did. It is said that they come from another galaxy. Um, but anyway. Robert April, I'd like to see a, the animated series formally declared fourth TOS fourth season, and the Star Trek continues picked up as the fifth. James McGill, a couple weekends ago, I went where no Trekkie had gone before, finished one of the toughest and most beautiful marathons in Catalina Island. Took four days before I could walk normally, so I binged Star Trek. I watched Star Trek shows. Nice. Good job. Uh, Daniel says, I'm excited for X-Men 97 tomorrow. Fleet Boss has a very young Samuel for sure. Yes, little baby. James McGill, that marathon event was something my wife wanted to do with me. It was an adventure. It was worth seeing my better half cross the finish line. Nice. Eric says, Sam didn't even shave back then. Indeed. Hikaru Sulu, coming up on April 1st, up needs episodes two of Trucker Stew and Mechanic Sammy of Truck Yards. I don't even know what you're talking about. Matthew Lebner, this is awesome, Captain. Never got into Starfleet Battles, then you totally missed out, my friend. Starfleet Battles is amazing. Eric Martin, same wallpapers. Sam's wallpaper never changed. Changes. That's actually a very different wallpaper. Yeah, it doesn't look different, but it's very different. Most of those ships, I think all those ships are profile views. Now he's got like three quarters and top, and so, you know, he's got a whole bunch behind him. It's it, it has changed. Trek or not, it's our translation of their words for the same things. Captain Robert April, more like that's just what Starfleet calls them. God only knows what the Tholians call them. <coughs> Olivia, has anyone told you the stream is clear? You, your sound quality is great and you look great. Well, thank you. Nobody ever does that. They always bitch and complain when it's messed up. But when it's good, nobody ever says anything. So thank you, Olivia. I really appreciate that. Fleet Paw. One look at that article and who wrote it made me snort water out my nose. Olivia, can you do a tier list on pets? Um, uh, pets in Star Trek? I don't, I don't know.
Eric Martin says, are we ever going to see a second truck yards? That was a treat. Truck yards? What is that? I'll have to look that up later. I assume it's like a like a truck stop or like it's a yard where they park trucks. I don't know. Hikaru Sulu, Captain, always looks great. Uh, I don't think I look great in that video. That's for sure. Tier list of Star Trek races. We'll probably do that at some point. We were talking about a few different idea, idea, different ideas today earlier on our uh, our Trek Yards meeting. Captain Robert April, we've got Porthos, all the iterations of Spot, Livingston, the Lionfish, and Tribbles done. What about Spock's pet? His uh, Sila, the Silat. Or, no, the Silat was the, the, see, that was the cat. He had a bear, a big bear. There's more pets than that, Robert April. Trek or not, I want to see food yards where the cat travels around showing the fine cuisines of London, Ontario, Canada. Mm -hmm. First season could be poutine season. Oh, stop it. You look fine in that video. Just like you look fine in this video. That is sarcasm to the max. Poutine out of the... Poutine out the content. <laughs> oh, fine. Throw in Achaya. That's its name. Is it a La Mancha? Cat of La Matcha, or is I don't remember. Uh, welcome back to Truck Yards, everybody. Truck or not, I used series as a joke because the English like to mix those up. Aren't you? Aren't you English? Uh, Fleet Pa, Vulcan children are never late with their uh, Silat's dinner. Eric Martin, Cap, we'd have to make. A stop at Mandarin. Yes, absolutely. I see that, yeah. Trek or not. Uh, no, I'm Northern Irish. It's the same thing. Um, Ichia was the solid. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna try this fucking sand art again. Northern Irish, Scottish, you're all fucking English. You all live in England. Hate to break it to you. <clears throat> Rene, greeting Cap and crew. Oh, Trek or not, I don't know if you noticed, but you're now a moderator. I don't know if you if you saw that or cared, but So Trekonaut has moderation powers now. Sounds more exciting than it is. Shay says, I'm part Scottish. So am I. I'm part Scottish, part Irish, and part German. But mostly Irish and German. So. Take that, suckers. Yeah, I noticed. Happy to now be a wrench. But do you have a wench? And again, my sand art didn't work. Fuck. Shay says, like Sean Connery. Sean Connery. You know what? I think I still missed the good part of that episode where we talk about the history of the, the Tholians. No diamond crossbow, guys. Uh, no diamond crossbow, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond their first appearance in Star Trek uh, TOS. So, according to Starfleet Battles, the Tholians are not native to our galaxy and are, in fact, the survivors of a race that once dominated their. Tholians, however. You gotta see Sam's face when I said this because he, 
he doesn't if he doesn't like something or doesn't agree with it, he makes weird snarky faces and makes snarky comments. And it always has bothered me. Always will. But check this uh, out. There are many different stories and interpretations, as it were. Um, and we're going to give you some most interesting ones. But if you want to read up on lots of, you know, all the information of Thurians, you can look on the internet and stuff. It's all, it's all great stuff. This is some of the best bits. So let's give you a brief history of the Tholians. There really isn't much in canon, so we're going to delve into the territory of Starfleet Battles, tabletop game, as they really flesh the Tholians out uh, beyond their first appearance in Star Trek uh, TOS. So, according to Starfleet Battles, the Tholians are not native to our galaxy and are in fact the survivors of a race that once dominated their home galaxy, called M81, also referred to as Bode's Galaxy, the location of which still remains unknown. They were in fact refugees that escaped a terrible uprising that nearly wiped out their species. But don't feel too bad for them. Uh, the surprising was done by a subservient race that the Tholians had controlled and used for generations. So we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, upon arriving here in our galaxy, they called themselves the Tholian Assembly. Okay. And immediately started annexing many systems, including ones that belonged to the Klingon Empire, hence building themselves a rather large territory patch rather quickly. And these annex systems were in fact at the extreme edge of Klingon-controlled territory, so it wasn't immediately noticed by Klingons that, you know, they stole the territory. Um, but when they did find out, it was almost too late. The Thurians had really dug in with those amazing claws. Um, needless to say, many, many skirmishes with the Klingons ensued. The Tholians are extremely xenophobic, territorial, and value punctuality and strict protocols above all else. They fled their galaxy when a subservient race called the Siltorians, that were genetically engineered by the Tholians to be the primary servant race, revolted against their Tholian masters. Mm. The Siltorians were six foot tall insectoids whom were the only race that the Tholians allowed to maintain a fleet of ships, as they were responsible for keeping the other races ruled by the Tholians in line. They're basically the bouncers for the Tholians. I like it. Yeah, that's a, that a pretty interesting stuff about the story. Um, they definitely came up with some interesting ideas before Star Trek was back on TV. So back to the Tholians. Um, now, having arrived some 200 years ago, by an unknown means, they settled on the edge of our galaxy in the Spiral Arm, which, as we just mentioned, was very close to Klingon territory in some older star charts. Um, the mysterious way they traveled here is compounded by the fact they were somehow able to bring their entire planet with them, which was their provincial capital at the time. This later became Tholia, though, the capital of Tholian Assembly. Really cool, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it has since been speculated that they were able to access some sort of interdimensional rifts, as many encounters with them over the years have involved strange and bizarre natural phenomenon including spatial rifts, as well as strange temporal disturbances. In the later years, more Tholians actually arrived from the other galaxy, and these new additions were called Neo-Tholians, um, and brought with them new ship designs and a new mentality and design philosophy. Known as the 312th Battle Fleet, these ships that were brought with them were larger, better designed, and included 12 warships, two dreadnoughts, four heavy cruisers, and six light cruisers, plus a whole plethora of other smaller ships. And in fact, these fresh ships were constructed in their home galaxy, and then actually bring these shipyards with them. Yeah, and due to different technologies and materials, uh, these new ships could not be repaired or rebuilt if damaged extensively, using only the current shipyards that they had here. Uh, so these Neo ships never ventured far from fully controlled star bases. Or if they did, they were heavily escorted by a small flotilla of expendable... Oh, for fuck's sakes. ...dable or... I look like the Tholian ship. <laughs> and uh, I called them up and I asked, hey, you're Holy shit, I forgot we had... We had a guest star for that one. Design. So let's bring in Mr. John Eves. Howdy, man. So, as we all should know, because we did the first one last year, um, we are on the Tholian, and this is the one you designed, John. Yes, that was one of my favorites. Good first point. So, what do you think we first got called upon to make the new, old, updated, retro Tholian ship? Uh, well, what was... What, what, the funnest thing of Enterprise was to take the old ships, because uh, sooner or later we know that show up in the scripts. And I was kind of waiting for the Tholian. And I remember when it came up, the the little Romulan was the other one that we're mm. anxiously waiting to have happen. But that Tholian one, that was always my favorite as a kid. It scared the crud out of me when they're making that web around the ship. But uh, that uh, uh, Watch Hang design, we kind of decided in the art department to do more of the retro stuff. They wouldn't have minded if we would have done like whole new designs to uh, submit. We tried so hard to keep that retro account accountability alive. If you want to see the episode, click the link that Sleep Paw shared. But yes, I, I forgot. I fucking forgot we had John Eves join us for that one. We hope you enjoyed this episode. So there you go. 
And now you know. And knowing is half the battle. All right. Um, please don't say that if you come here. What, that you're all English? We're all humans. I'll just say that. We're all humans. Just get, a, get the fuck along. I don't understand. Uh, Robert April says, suppose, suppose our good captain said that you're all English lying in Dublin. How many teeth would he come away with? All of them, because I'm the captain. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Shay says he gave you the wrench to work on the next truck yard's ve uh, vehicle. <laughs> uh, Don Don, virtual Trek Conrad. Hello, Captain Foley and all. Hope everyone's welcome. Hope everyone is well. Yes. Thank you. On, on. Olivia, wow, Sam's lighting isn't so bad. He looks like a vampire on Twilight. Oh, nice. Also, happy Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Day. Okay. Eric Martin, good old Eve. Someone with respect for retro design. Yeah, Eve's is fantastic. He broke his thumb. He fell and broke his thumb on his drawing hand, so he's in bad shape right now. In response to the Austin St. John and George Lucas situations, I made Super Sente being my number one entertainment franchise with Star Wars as my number two. Power Rangers is now among my honorable mention entertainment franchises along with the Ninja Turtles, Star Trek, Pokemon, Digimon, and Orville, etc. Fleet Pow. Ah, the BF years of Trek Yards. It's nostalgic. The BF years. What does that mean? Seriously, I don't know. What's that mean? BF years. Like BF Goodrich? Before time. Trek yards in the before time. Fuck's sake. Goddamn piece of shit. Goddamn sand art thing. Motherfucker. Uh, that's fine. Whatever. BF before Fleet Pa. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Shay says, Tholian Assembly, Orion Syndicate, Gorn, Hegemony, Breen Confederacy, Sheliac Corporate, Cardassian Union. All the, all those things, yes. We need to do more. That one was specifically on the Tholians as a race. And uh, we need to do... We need to do that for other other ones as well. Olivia, Trek Yard, Stewart is turning 50, and to be honest, he doesn't look a day... Older than 49. Uh, Shea Locomotive Productions. All grouped. Named species. Paul Hitchcock. Uh, wishing an easy and fast recovery to Johnny's. Yeah, no shit. Watch this. He'll never be able to draw again. Wouldn't that be awful? with people group. Trek or not, a daily dose of geekery keeps you young. Yes. Sci-fi show a day keeps the doctor away? I don't know. <clears throat> but yeah, wow. I've, I'd completely forgotten that that was our one year anniversary. Wow. It, it doesn't seem that long ago that we did that. How in the hell have we been doing this for 10 years? I find that insane. The Kazon Nistrum, yes. Touche. Thought just looks dead. But I had to watch and see if she was breathing. She's still breathing. A BJ a day keeps... Well, never mind. Paul Hitchcock. Yo, man, knock on some wood if you're going to say something like that. Say something like what? About dot? Yeah, I'm knocking on wood. Oh, no, 
now she's twitching. What a life. What a life. I wish I could be a pug for a day. Paul Hitchcock, is it cocaine? Is that how you and Samuel have been able to do this for 10 years? Mm, no. Olivia. Oh, excuse me. I can't wait to publish my new book, Trek Yards, the unauthorized version. Shay, for some reason, moopsie. Oh, because I was shown. Yeah. Yeah, Lola looks like a moopsie. Trick or not, I suspect uh, powderized Klingon time crystals. Fleet Paw, I thought it was capuch a capacious am amounts of opium and energy drinks on Sam's part. Energy drinks for Sam, yes. Catch your cell white on the rocks. That too. Uh, Terrence Childs. Hi, Captain. What are you doing tonight? Uh, I mean, you're looking at it, so... Does that answer your question? Paul Hedgecock. Knock on wood regarding Johnny's not being able to draw again. Joe, happy to see Dot is doing well, I guess. There you go. Olivia Julius. I love that one of them... Is cuddling a stuffed carrot. Yeah, that's precious. Eric Martin, five dollars. How about another forced smile for your fans? Totally natural. This is exactly how he will smile. I'll try not to move. So that you guys can appreciate what a real smile looks like. Is that one of the Trek Yard shirts that's available on Teetering? On Teespring? Yes, this, this shirt is available on Teespring. Root beer is insidious, just like the Federation. Yeah, this is one of the Trek Yard shirts. This one's available on Teespring. Trek Yards with the Romulan Commander and the cloaking device, pinup style. And it says Trek Yards in English and in Romulan. Romulanushka. So yeah, that's, that's the Trek Yard shirt. This one's only available on Teespring though, because on Tee Public it got copyrighted by guess who? Disney. Yep. Disney pulled this shirt off RT Public for copyright infringement. Disney. Disney. Do you see anything Disney about this? Anything at all? I'll wait. Disney? What the fuck were you thinking? So anyway, it's available on T-Spring store, not the T Public store. Uh, Captain Robert April, new drinks for the Star Trek theme bar. Catch yourself, White Russian. <laughs> nice. Terrence Childs, Battlestar Galactica against an Earth Force heavy cruiser. Which one do you think will win? I don't know what Earth Force heavy cruiser is, so Battlestar Galactica. Trek or not, ventriloquism is in your future. Get a Sam puppet. I dare you. I have, I have one of those stuffed Sam puppets downstairs. Little crocheted one. I could do this and talk like I did it. Oh, I'm Samuel. I did a stupid, a really stupid British accent. Good day, governor. I don't know, because his fucking American accent is atrocious. So, Paul Hitchcock. Next in Trek Yards Unauthorized, Captain Foley sleeps in an oxygen tent, which he believes gives him sexual powers. Credit to the Simpsons. Trek or not, just watch where you put your hand. Mm. Eric says that would be funny. Uh, subs, substrist, whatever. Cocaine for the white and see what the Jem'Hadar do. 
or substitute cocaine for their white. Uh, that would be hilarious. And Fleet Paw shared the Teespring store where you can get this shirt if you want. Shay Lookmore Productions, what's better, Captain Star Trek TOS or OG BSG? Uh, TOS. Uh, OG BSG is still fantastic. I really love it. But if I had to watch only one, it would be Star Trek. So. That being said, Jesus Christ. There's a lot more TOS uh, Star Trek, so. But Battlestar Galactica, there's some very pretty ladies. Vipers are nice. There's a lot of action. Yeah, it's, it's still TOS. Uh, Olivia, weird question. Can you do a tier list about make-up... Made... Made up alien language. Probably could. <sighs> Yanni Yan Yans. Robert April is as in Babylon 5 Earth Force Cruiser. Shea says OG BSG opening is better than TOS. Oh, yeah. There are some who believe that life here began out there with tribes of humans. <laughs> it's fucking great. And the music? Dun, 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 dun. Fuck this new stupid... Uh, listen, listen. As much as the new BSG is cool, their fucking music is god-awful. <laughs> like fucking tribal fucking whatever the shit it's awful it's fucking awful go back to the original old school bsg music for god's sakes that was fucking epic uh, robert april let's be honest several of the original bastard stories stunk on ice they were forced into production too soon and never really caught up oh absolutely yes Trek or not, uh, they missed a trick having the Ocampa having been created by the Dominion, but a failed experiment as their telepathic powers were of concern, so they had were forced to leave and travel to the Delta Quadrant. That would have been cool. Eric Martin, considering it was the 60s, TOS did such a good job at world building, in my opinion. Yes. Shay says, new BSG music sucks to... New BSG music sucks too, the OG. New BSG music sucks. Oh, compared to the OG. Yes. Yes, it does. It just sucks for music in general. Because it's just awful. It's just fucking noise. And not good noise either. Alright, this one might have worked. We might actually have a good good standard thing going on now so oh no 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 we don't no 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 we don't it fucked up too the shaky cam approach in new bsg is a fucking pain it is i noticed it the first time i watched it uh and i it's got really annoying however when i rewatched it i didn't really even notice it so it's it's one of those things you kind of have to learn to adapt to or not but new BSG music always reminded me of NYPD Blue different for the sake of being different like a lot of new shows yeah it was just kind of shit compared especially compared to the original like yeah Captain Robert April they were going for a documentary you are there thing yes even so much as to have like a bulkhead in front of the like, camera and like a open part of this bulkhead and you see the people behind it. It's like, okay, whoa, cameraman, what's up? Shaw says, or Shay, it's not Shaw, Shay. I even like the theme of OG BSG better than the Star Wars theme. Mm, no. 
the OG BSG was trying to emulate that feel, that like bombastic feel. I think they did a good job. I don't think either one is better than the other. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. Trek or not, reporters free floating in space with cams then. Yes. I love the zoom in on the Viper. Like it's a quick zoom in and then a try to get it in frame. It's fucking, it's kind of neat. Uh, I just, it doesn't have to be every fucking scene. Jesus Christ. I think they toned it down after a while. There was a few scenes per show that had it, but not everyone. Eric Martin, I performed the OG BSG music at a music recital once. My saxophone with piano accompaniment. Oh, did you really? You didn't tell me you played the saxophone. You need to play the saxophone now. Keeping the shaky cam on the inside scenes only would have been better. Mm, I don't know. I do like when they zoom in on the ships. That's kind of got that. I think it's kind of cool. Vipers versus TIE Fighters. Vipers would win. It's that simple. Trek or not, to be fair, the shaky cam down the corridors in first contact was good. Yes. Robert April, it was the same effects crew that worked on Firefly. Then they snuck in Serenity a few times. Oh, in BSG, yeah, yeah, yeah. The new BSG, that is. Yeah. Eric Martin, I was pretty, ta I was pretty talented before I became a dull accountant. You know that accountant is code for like prostitute. You do know that, right? She's an accountant. I'm just saying. How would I know that? I don't know, but I'm just saying. Take it for what it is. Polichcock, I dug the reimagined BSG scores. Storming of New Caprica from season three was great. I'm sure some of the in-show music was great. I never really noticed that kind of stuff. But that opening title music, it's just fucking atrocious. And, you know. It's just fucking atrocious. Oh my god, seriously. But what's really amazing is the OG one. Join your local Tim's. That's not it. Transferable skills. Do this is it. There are those who believe that life here began out there, far across the universe, with tribes of humans who may have been the forefathers of the Egyptians. Or the Toltecs, or the Mayans. Some believe that there may yet be brothers of man who even now fight to survive somewhere beyond the heavens. That alone is epic. I'm gonna get a copyright claim. But it's all right. I don't even care at this point. Yeah, it's fucking great. Do we have the new one? That's the question. There's a new one I wanted to compare it to, and it's just... Yeah, no, screw that. No, that's another...
Yeah, this shit. Calm the fuck down and relax. I'm a drummer. Jazz hands. Pathetic. Pathetic. Pathetic and sad, but it's okay. Why would I use kayak? I don't know. Why would you use kayak? I really need to get this account with premium. <laughs> Trek Yards has premium, so I don't have to watch fucking commercials, but not my personal account. The irony. Uh, I dug the, uh, if I pay, if the pay is good, I'll accept that. <laughs> Imperial Star Destroyer versus the Battlestar. I <coughs> I think I'd vote on a battle star, even though Imperial Star Destroyer is a lot bigger, I think. All right, April, I wonder how the OG Galactica theme would work over the new show's opening titles. Paul Hitchcock, Gary Hutzel led the BF BSG visual effects team. He worked on TNG and DS9 too. Yes. Classic battle star theme is phenomenal. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Area 51, someone sawing wood in the background. Uh, Fleet Paw, NX class versus a Battlestar. I'm sorry, but the NX class would be have its ass kicked. Swarm of Vipers. Robert April, fleeing the Cylon tyranny, the last Battlestar, Galactica, led a ragtag fugitive fleet on a lonely quest. A shining planet known as Earth. Yeah, sorry, I didn't play that part. Probably had to scratch that itch by adding that. Area 51, ah yes, people willing and using sticks to make a sound, sound tribal and ancient. Never heard that before. Olivia says, I gotta go to bed. Good night, Cap. See you tomorrow. Good night, Fleet Paw. Good night, Olivia. Paul Hitchcock. Drummer joke. How do you know when a bad drummer is knocking on the door? The knocking speeds up. I don't get it. But I'm not a drummer, so I don't get the drummer humor. properly. Nope. It's another failure. Ugh. My goodness. Ugh. The fates. The fates conspire to ruin things for me. Pre-refit Connie versus a Battlestar. Uh, so TOS, Constitution Class. Um, I think phasers would I think Frasers would be pretty powerful against a Battlestar, but Battlestars are super armored. And again, the Vipers. I don't know. Eric Martin, they should have funded a BSG Season 2 instead of the awful Galactic in 1980. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. I agree. Uh, maybe the Connie, yeah. Uh, Robert April, that was the compromise. Agreed, Galactic 1980, not good. No, not good at all. Yeah. I really did like the, B the new BSG, though. It was, I gotta say, it's good. Bye. 
Yeah. <laughs> like how Hikaru Suda says. Agreed. Galactic in 1989. Not good. 1989. I know, I know you meant 1980 and you just hit the wrong key, but that's fine. Uh, Fleet Paw, I think the Connie would prevail, but she'd need a tug to get back to space dock for repairs. Eric Martin, I remember episodes like Gun on Ice Planet Zero. Loved that as a kid. Yeah, I have all the original BSG on Blu-ray as well. I need to actually watch those. Some interesting stuff there for sure. Uh, Hikaru Sulu tried so hard to get in the new BSG, but could... Oh, you're missing out, my friend. I tried too and couldn't do it because of the shaky cam and stuff. I quit after like seven episodes of the season one and then I'm like year and a half, two years later, I'm like, I need to, I need to watch this. So I sat down and watched it all and it's fucking phenomenal. Uh, the way it ends, mwah, chef's kiss of brilliance. It's very, it's very well done. It's very well done. So if you can't get into it, I, I understand, but I also feel bad for you because you're really missing out. So I would suggest giving it, giving it another chance. 17 people here and only 33 likes. For fuck's sakes, guys. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Good God, I want to get up to 50 likes. 33 likes with 17 people here. It's totally unacceptable. What an awful ratio. You people should know better. I'm, I'm ashamed to, to even say that I know you. Not, not cool. Captain, did you ever watch Herculoids from Hanna-Barbera? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I'm aware of it, but no, I've never wa I never watched it. Creepa says, I, I see 34. Well, there's 34 now, yes. Paul Hitchcock, quick original Trek movie question. Did you ever think they were building to the actual war between the Federation and the Klingon Empire? during and after Star Trek. Is that four or six? Six? No, I never thought that. Trisha Helfer, and I've said, yeah, she's, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot to love about the new BSG. It's just a matter of disengaging and getting out of your original Battlestar Galactica bias and yeah yeah and getting over the shaky cam and, and stuff like that Robert April the original Galactica did make it to number 25 in the overall ratings but at $1 million per episode, back when that actually meant something, it didn't do well enough to get a straight renewal. Yes. Hikaru Sulu, Negvar is bigger or smaller than Diderot X-Class Warbird? Uh, smaller, I believe. Eric Martin, I remember the Adama maneuver when they were escaping New Caprica epic. Yes, yes it was. Cylons versus Borg versus Cybermen. Go. By your command. Resistance is futile. And I don't know what the Cybermen say because I don't give a shit. So. I want to say the Cylons would win maybe, but it would probably be the Borg. Again, I don't give a shit about the Cybermen or what they're capable of. They're just a knockoff of the Borg. I know they came first. Shut up. But you know what I mean? It's just like, it's the same old, same old. OG Adama or New Adama? Ooh, both very good for different reasons. Both are fantastic. Edward James Olmos does an awesome job as Adama. But so did Lauren Green. So that's... That's a tough, interesting question. Cyberman upgrade. Eric Martin, original BSG Joe Colicos was such a good villain. Oh yes, absolutely. Robert April, kind of what sunk the original Star Trek. 
It wasn't the ratings disaster of Legend, but it didn't do good enough to justify the costs. Yeah. It's, it's true. And that's kind of shitty. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm so tired. By your command. Yes, Hikaru Sulu. I'd like to know who you really are, because you know stuff about me, and you know you're going to Wonderfest. Hikaru Sulu, who are you? Existence is futile. Futile. You say futile? Or you say futile? I say futile, personally, but I can understand people that say futile. But that sounds like futile, which is like feudal Japan. I don't know if that works so much. Hmm. Anyway. Eric Barton, I was glad to see Richard Hatch in New BSG as he had tried himself for years to restart the series. Yes. I didn't like his character in New BSG, though. Paul Hitchcock, who had better hair, Dirk Benedict or Kate, Katie Saka? Dirk Benedict, for sure. He was also the superior Starbuck, in my opinion, but whatever. Robert April, I refer folks to the Battle of Canary Wharf regarding Cybermen and Daleks. The Cybermen can Dalek my balls. Hikaru Sulu, we met last year at Wonderfest. I was in your video. Well, that narrows it down. There's only been a hundreds of people in my video. Any other clues? Okay, I'm trying this fucking thing one more time. Better. Oh no, yeah, it didn't work. Fuck. I gotta let it set a little bit more. That's very disappointing. Don't you know? Futile, futile, da data, data, potato, potato, same thing. What about tomato and tomato? Because English, tomato. Yeah. Hikaru Sulu, I have been a... Man of many names on this channel. Shay Lookamore Productions, Brett Maverick, Bright Starline, Harrison Wells. Ah, uh, now I know who you are. Indeed! Yes, yes. Good to see you. Robert April. I had a great story idea that could, that would have had Dirk Benedict as Katie's dad. An old Viper pilot who also used the call sign Starbuck. That would have been great. That would have been great. Yeah, I don't know why they did that with Starbuck. I mean, it worked out fine, and she's fantastic in the new season, in the new series, but did she have to be Starbuck? Couldn't she have been somebody else? Like Starbright? Starbright and Starbuck. What a team. But I think Bert, Dirk Benedict said he didn't know anything to do with the show because of kind of felt a little bit shafted by the whole situation so you know okay, switching between Shay and Hukaro Hukaro Sulu So, who here is a member of the Trekyards channel and has access to the Discord server? Let me know, because uh, we're thinking of doing a watch party in the next little bit, 
and uh, hopefully you guys will tune in for it and hang out with me as we watch something, probably do a movie of some kind, but anyway. Robert April, that's kind of why I thought up the cool story for the, the story idea. Uh, so to build a bridge, a bit of a bridge, that'd be awesome. I would have liked to have seen that. Pelichcock, at one point they were looking at having Benedict play God in season one, but they went in a different direction. I don't think the idea ever went past the writer's room. Shay Locomotive Productions, also Captain Casey Stewart at one time. Oh. Why all the different aliases? Why don't people just put their real name? That always bugs me. Or people that have, like, as their profile picture, something not them. So if you find, like, 15 of the same person's name, you don't know which one it is that you met because they got a fucking cat as their goddamn profile picture or some shit. Like, put your fucking picture. That's what it's there for, you know? I don't understand. I just don't understand. I'm a member. I'm captain of the highlighter ship. Robert April. I think Dirk would have liked my idea better. Well then, too bad it can't happen. What is going on over here in the chat here? Wow, you fucking dogs are loud tonight. Oops. Well, that ended the snoring. I was going to show you the way she was sleeping, and I dropped my phone. So, but it did end the snoring. I'm sorry, Lola. Because the phone didn't hit you. Are you okay? Did it scare the crap out of you? Oh, my goodness. Multiple names, multiple channels for support of Trek Yards. Oh, well, that's cool. Well, I don't have a very common given name or surname, so I think there may be only one me in all of Facebook. Well, that's, that's true. I use my real name, Harry51. Jam. Holy crap. I've seen that. Never seen that side of the room before. Love the plant. You know, GM, you never seen what side of the room? What the fuck are you talking about? I've shown off this whole room. There's this shelf, and there's plants, and bookcase, and record player. It's a little bit messy right now, but it is what it is. And there's. And this you see all the time in the background. And there's that over there. And there's that guy. Look at him. Hi. Whee! Hi, everybody. Never seen that side of the room before. How's Dot doing? Oh, she's doing really well. She's filling up really good. <clears throat> but we got um, got a call from the vet today. They did her blood work and her um, urine anal analysis, urine urine analysis, urine, and it turns out she's actually has a E. coli. So, so the antibiotics they gave us won't work on E. coli. So we got to go in tomorrow and pick up ones that she has to take for ten days to get rid of her E. coli. How she got E. coli, I don't know, but she's fine. Feet paw, two dollars. Ow, I fell in my head. There's a lump now. Ow. That's the captain. Fleet paw, thank goodness he's wearing pants. Are those Egyptian things from Indiana Jones? They are. They are what are on the top of the ark. 
I've showed them off in a video when I got them, but the, the Grail Diary. I know a different movie, but. Here they are. It's very nice. Sadly, they're closed, but they were on the thing as well. But I think they would have been better as naked girls, but, you know, anyway. Regardless, it's kind of got a cherub face. But yeah, it's like an exact replica of the ones that are on the Ark. But you got big ass feet. Tickle, 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 tickle. Anyway, but yeah. Of course, had to buy two of them. Couldn't just buy one. That would be weird and strange and stupid. Eric Martin, hope it knocks some sense into you, Flipa. Shay Locomotive Productions, I'm a man of many interests. So am I, in case you can't tell. Paul Hitchcock, did you check out the Star Wars Acolyte trailer? Not yet. Somebody mentioned that at the beginning of this live stream, and no, I haven't seen it yet. So. Robert April, well, they are cherubim. They are. Fleet Paw says, I have a heart on, Eric Martin. Oh, hard head. <laughs> Same thing, though, kind of. I don't know what you guys are talking about, but you need to stop it because, you know, this is a public, public chat, so. Jay says, quite young, but knowledge in pop culture. Who, you or me? Fleet Paw, anyone here from... <coughs> Anyone here a Borderlands game franchise fan? Anyone here a Borderlands fan? Eric Martin, crazy thing is that the trailer people are more talented. That the trailer people are more talented than showmakers anymore. <laughs> Shay says, uh, from stuff like Gilligan's Island to modern day stuff. Well, yeah. Gilligan's Island is fantastic. Are you kidding? Hogan's Heroes. Sanford and Son. Jefferson's, Different Strokes. All that shit, man. All that shit. <sighs> I'm so annoyed at this sand art thing. I'm not going to be in the sand enough time to settle, I guess. So it's kind of... Not packed down enough? I don't know. It's disappointing. All in the family. WKRP in Cincinnati. Baby, if you ever wondered, wonder whatever became of me. I'm living on the air in Cincinnati. Cincinnati WKRP. Got kind of tired of packing and unpacking. Town to town, up and down the dial. Baby, you and me were never meant to be. Baby, think of me once in a while. I'm at WKRP in Cincinnati. Yeah. They're making a Borderlands movie and it looks fucking great. Johnny Fever is a personal hero of mine. Hell yeah. Absolutely. And Bonnie and... Yeah, man. Les Nessman, Herb, Venus, Mr. Carlson, Lonnie. No, I was, what was the, what was her name? Shit, it's played by Lonnie, Lonnie Anderson. What was her name? Why can't I remember her name? W. K. Pierce was great. Just saying. Mark and Mindy, Greatest American Hero, Littlest Hobo, Loneliest Hobo. Never heard of the Loneliest ho Hobo. In Canada, we have the Littlest Hobo, which is about a St. Bernard. Not a St. Bernard, oh my God. A German Shepherd um, dog that, anyway, it was fine. Uh, greatest American Hero, absolutely. 
Johnny Fever. Yeah, yeah. Night Court. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I was going to say Night Court, but it's not quite the same era. It's a little bit beyond, but yeah. Boom, 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 boom. There it is. Give me a break. Yes. With Nell Carter. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, When I was volunteering at the community radio station up in Boulder, I finally had the chance to do a music show. First time in about 20 years. Nice. It's awesome. Shit, we could just go through and name old shows now. Because there were lots of great ones. I love Lucy. Nah. Nah. The Honeymooners, mm. to the moon, Alice, to the moon. Mm. I think you're going a little too early there. I really like, I really like Ralph Cramden. Facts of Life, yes. Gummy Bears, yes. DuckTales, yes. Robert April says, I opened with the audio from WKRP when Andy changes the station format in the middle of Johnny's air shift. Nice. <sighs> DuckTales, Tailspin, Darkwing Duck. Like, Jesus Christ, now we're getting into all the shit. Anyway, that'll open up a whole new branch of discussion, and we're coming up at that two-hour mark, so I don't know if we should do that. The Brady Brunch, nah. Nah. Next, you'll say the Partridge Family. It's like, no. no. The Waltons, not so much. Patty Duke Show. Don't know if I ever heard of that one. Petticoat junk Junction. Nah, I wasn't into that either. Beverly Hillbillies, watch that a little bit. Um, Mama's Family, yeah, Mama's Family was good. Robert April, you people are tre treading on my childhood. We're treading on it. We're just talking about it because we remember it fondly. Golden Girls, yeah. Silver Spoons. Who's the Boss? <sighs> Green Acres, yeah, Drew Carey show. Mm. Oh man. Rockford Files, yes, Magnum PI, hundred percent, Airwolf. Night Rider, A Team. I remember when Brady Bunch was still on ABC. Three's Company, yes. Three's Company is a good shout out. Yeah. Happy days. Yeah. Hey, Captain, what did I miss? Miss a lot of things. Get here early. Hear me. Well, at least you're here, not like Fleet Paw at times. Remington Steel, yeah. What about Moonlighting? Um, fuck, this opens up so many memories, man. Matt Houston. I liked Matt Houston. My parents watched Matt Houston. Let's not forget Quincy M.E., Fantastic show. Colombo. Hill Street Blues. Yeah. 
maybe later this week we'll do a uh, live talking about all these old shows and your favorites, if that's something you guys want to do, because I think that'd be fun. Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, yes. Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, yes. <laughs> Jinx, you guys owe each other a beer. Um... Well, I stopped the snoring, but I got a sad looking pug that looks like she's in trouble. She looks like Kilroy, actually. Kilroy was here. Look at those eyes. Look at those claws. The Himalayan fur goblin. Evil. It will suck your soul as well as your bones. Moopsie. Moopsie. Ah, oh, the raccoons. Cyril Sneer. Yeah. Little house on the prairie. The Waltons. Walker, Texas Ranger. Simon and Simon was good. Uh, Murder, she wrote. Road to Avonlea, the raccoons, Baba Black Sheep, and Black Sheep Squadron. That one doesn't ring a bell for me. But what do I know? I'm just a young punk. Damn. All right, guys. Um... Remington Steele screwed up Pierce Brosnan's first go at James Bond. Show was canceled. He was signed as Bond. NBC decided to capitalize on it by renewing the show, thus screwing up the whole deal. Yep, you're 100% correct. He did eventually get to play him, but... Diagnosis murder. Jinx, you guys owe a beer. Never really watched Diagnosis Murder. Touched by an Angel. I think I, I think I downloaded the wrong Touched by an Angel. What, what? Yeah. Jig. I love it when a plan comes together. Hannibal. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. Put in the chat right now with the word yes, if you think we should talk about this later in the week. Open up all these old shows, talk about them, reminisce, see what, we're, what we remember, what, bring back, what, blah, 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 what brings back memories. Oh, my God. Speak. Stuart, can you speak English? Do you speak it, motherfucker? First Monday spinoff of JAG, NCIS. Yes, yes. That's two yeses. Can we get more? Jamie Somerville, yes. More? More? How many people can I get to say yes? Say yes now, everyone. Anyone doesn't say yes is going to get kicked out of my live stream. Robert April, I see a Highlander katana in the background. You see a few of them. One is actually from the movie Highlander and is signed by Christopher Lambert. Or Lambert, if you prefer. I also have the Kurgan sword back there as well. And I have the... the uh, the Highlander sword from the series, also. Duncan McLeod's. So. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Mine, 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 mine. Yes. Eric Martin just saw the Disco Trailer Season 5 starting April 4th. Indeed. We already established that earlier in the live, but thank you. Red Green Show. Eh. Eh. There can be only one. There can be only one Highlander Club. Yeah. Robert April, you didn't know I had a signed Highlander sword, eh? Well, there's cheap Fleet Plod just shared the link. But I can show, show you either anyway on this live before I end out. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. 
I did a video on it, so. Be only one signed by Christopher Lambert. It's also etched into the blade, his signature also. And this is a this one is a live blade. Also, for Robert April, the Kurgan sword, which has the, the spikes. swords. That's not a knife. That's a knife. Did you cut yourself on the Lambert sword? No, I cut myself on the Duncan sword because it's also a live blade. Um, Robert April. Sure, you don't mean Prairie Home Companion? <sighs> Crocodile Dundee. All right, well, I'm going to call it there. Thank you to everybody that watched. I've cheered up a bit, so I appreciate that. As always, you guys, you're the light of my life. You make life worth living. And it cheered me up somewhat, so. I still don't think that fucking sword's in there, right? Anyway, thank you for watching. Have yourselves a great night. Live long and prosper. This is the way. And there could be only one. All the things. Bye, guys. <laughs>